Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well today. Well, I just wanted to share um, an experience that I had yesterday. Um, it kind of goes along the line, not just with prepping, but with just preparedness, really. Emergency preparedness. Okay, so I was at home and I was by myself and I heard all this dripping and it sounded like a leaky faucet and um, lo and behold, our air conditioning unit turned out to be the condensation drainage tube had been clogged and uh, it was flooding, it had backed up and was flooding certain a certain area of our house. And it, you know, it was a lot of water. So anyway, I turned off the unit. I didn't know at the time exactly what it was, but it was, it was just really coming out of everywhere. And so I turned off the main unit and, you know, it's really hot and humid. And luckily, I do have a spare kind of little AC window unit. And I was able to put it up. You know, I was able to push it into my, into our room. And the way I installed it was just, you know, wasn't the greatest job in the world. And maybe I'll upload the video. I don't know. If you really want to see it, but um, I proved to myself I could do it. By morning, of course, you know we were able to install it properly. But um, I really took it as a op as an opportunity to problem solve and go through the motions of kind of a crisis situation and how I would handle it and. I have to tell you that the first thing that happened was, you know, when the power's cut off, there's this sense of shock, like, and disbelief, and kind of panic, like, oh my gosh, you know, when, when I shut off the central heat and central air, and I mean, the same thing happens when the power goes out, really, the climate, unless it's fall, and you can do without power, but right now, you know, it's, it would be deadly for many people to not have any electricity or to have a climate control. And I I believe that God put that in me about a month ago. I have been watching a channel about this man that is so good with them. Um, he's on one of my channel list. He's really good with solar. And I really got into his videos. So that's where the idea of the solar generator and being able to run like it. Um, his is a 10,000, mine's an 8,000 uh, BTU unit. So I kind of had it in my mind that I really wanted to do that because uh, I've we've actually not had electricity for a period of time. It was an emergency situation. And then we went without air conditioning for a while, for about two weeks. And uh, I ended up in minor emergency with really severe dehydration. And um, it sneaks up on you. You know, and I, I did make the statement, if we go, if we don't have any power, then we lose the dang power. I said that in another video. Well, it's a pretty big deal. It is, it's a big deal. Um, when it's hot and muggy and stagnant, and there's no breeze, and your house heats up. And yes, the mosquitoes were coming in while I was installing it, and while we, you know, professionally did it today. Um, while my husband did it. It is a big deal. Losing power is a big deal. Um, especially for our elderly, especially for anybody that has a weakened system, and even those people who don't. That heat is deadly. And if you're not acclimated to it, 
there was a long period of my life I was extraordinarily acclimated to it. You know, I, I just, I think I've already explained um, in another video, so I don't really want to go over it again, but uh, I could really hold my own and I got used to it. And growing out up in the country, you know, we called it farmer's blood. Getting farmer's blood. In fact, my dad, after he got off the tractor, from mowing literally the front 40. He will always wear a long sleeve flannel shirt, a hat, jeans, you know, and that's what all those old time farmers out there did. Um, you know, we grew uh, coastal Bermuda, alfalfa, barley, all that for um, horse, you know, it's horse country, basically, North Texas in an area that was horse country. So, and you know, I, I worked out in the garden and we fished, we had a lake and we fished and I was outside all the time, except sometimes during the heat of the day, like between like two and four, or one and four, one and five, well, probably, probably about between two and five. And, you know, when you're younger, you don't think about it as much, but I could not believe how hot that this house got within just 30 minutes to an hour, really. And I guess it depends on how sealed up your home is. But I went through those kind of stages a little bit of a little bit of panic, even though in my mind I've been preparing for a possible grid failure or just a possible power outage or rolling blackout. I had in my mind kind of what I would do. And that really that served me well. However, I still went through that panicky feeling. I didn't reach out and call anybody right away because I wanted to solve the problem myself. I wanted to see if I could have it done before everyone came home and show them that I was capable because it's important for me to still feel like I can do what I need to do and to take care of other people and myself because, you know, it's an imperfect world. Um, and it can be really daunting if you're in a situation like that of who to call, but you may have somebody that you feel safe to call. I do, I have someone in our, in our hood that I can, I, can reach up, I can reach out to, and I know he would be right over here to help me do that. Um, but I got frustrated, I got a little mad, um, I felt impatient, and there was just a couple of things that I hadn't really worked out all the way, but it was a really good beta test. So I'm leaving my window unit up. Uh, I'm going to leave it up until I get the solar hooked up, and then I'm going to play around with it. And one, one thing I really did learn was that it is important to have a plan, even if it's only in your mind, and then... When, and then be able to go ahead and get the logistics done. And, you know, luckily, in a way, I'm really grateful for what happened because I needed a trial run through. And now, I guess what I'm running into the most is developing a mindset. And I did mention this last time is the reason I'm doing the things I'm doing in terms of really trying to get as off grid as I can, right? And I'm doing it for myself in many ways. Um, I, of course I'm doing it for my family and my loved ones because I don't want them to suffer. And for other people, you know, we've got a lot of, you know, we've got a, we've got a mix of people here that aren't in great health and, um, but I feel more secure knowing that I've planned out beyond tomorrow. I've, you know, that I've, I've executed it and I realize kind of where my, my weaknesses are. And I am so glad that I didn't let anybody talk me out of getting that unit, getting my solar, um, I have not stockpiled six months worth of food, I can tell you that. Uh, that's not, you know, that's just being honest, because I know there's a lot of new people out there that haven't done that, and 
I want you to know that I'm on the journey too, but I don't know that I'll go beyond that, just in my opinion, because if I get to that in the first place, because uh, by that time, I think we will have had some sort of system put in place. Hopefully, there'll be some sort of community that we can form or put together. I do think to a degree that that would hopefully organically happen. I, in life, I've learned it's never just all or nothing. You know, usually the scenario is somewhere in between, unless it's an act of God, you know, or, you know, it could just be really anything. But if you've got that nagging feeling, and I hate to use the word nag, but what I have learned in the past three weeks, I would say, two weeks, actually more recently, is that those feelings that I get, it's kind of an urgent feeling that I need to do something. It's really God guiding me. It's God telling me. It is, it's the spirit moving through me, um, guiding me and prodding, not pro, I guess prodding me a little bit to do certain things. So I am, I, I really, that came through very loud and clear for me very recently. So I am, especially with by having an air conditioning right now running, uh, because that heat and that humidity is like a brick wall and it's, it's overwhelming. And in my opinion, it can kill a person. It can just, it can kill a person. It kills a lot of people. The heat does, especially if you're, especially if you're not acclimated, even if you are acclimated, but especially if you go from climate control to hot, humid, muggy, no refrigeration, no AC, no moving air, no fan. And another thing is hydration. You've really got to stay hydrated. I know that I keep, uh, for beginning preppers, and even I, I don't know if I have any room to give advice to any preppers. I, I, I would not dare give advice to any preppers. I just wouldn't do that. But for me, uh, I really like Hydrolyte. Hydrolyte is an electrolyte replacement tablet. And I've been going through these like crazy since yesterday. Even with that AC unit going in one room, I do have climate control now in one room, and I feel really good I was able to do that. I feel good. I feel like I accomplished a goal. But in other people, it's, to other people, it's, it, they're, you know, it's not going to be a big deal to them. They're not, I, I've discovered most people aren't interested. The people, I do have people in my life that are interested, and I love them, and I know they know who they are out there. And they've helped me tremendously, and I can always count on them for support in terms of God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, preparing, and, you know, the return of Jesus. So, but, you know, for the most part, I'm not going to have any more conversations with people that I know, period. I'm not going to instigate, I'm not going to, I'm no longer going to, I, I, I'm just, mum's the word. Um, and it's not because I'm trying to hide anything I have, because I don't feel like that's what we're you know what I'm called to do but it's like talking to a brick wall um, I don't know if we're just a certain group of people that is are really sensitive to impending uh, things to come crises to come but I know all of us have lived through them you know we've all lived through crisis and it's just really on the forefront that our standard of living is radically changing. And it's helpful, it's been helpful for me, for me to go ahead and act on the things that God has put upon me, to stir my spirit up to go and do. These are the tablets, by the way. Uh, you put one in about eight ounce glass of water, but I put two in a 16 ounce glass or a little bit more. And it's, it's as good as IV fluids. That's not medical advice, by the way, but uh, it will restore your, it, for me, it restores my electro, electrolyte imbalance, and that happens with dehydration, and dehydration is a killer. So, uh, anyway, 
I just kind of wanted to let you know that if there's something stirring in your heart, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be placed on your heart, it, you just feel it. It's like it won't go away. It, there's a, 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 something telling you, I need to do this, or I need to take care of that, or I've got to get this done, or I don't know why I'm feeling this way, but you know, I need to get some extra cables, or I need to get you know, my vehicle checked, or those type of things, those, those still small stirrings of the spirit, to me is God communicating with me on things that I need to do that will benefit, that give me peace of mind, that benefit me, and that they give me peace of mind, and then as a process, it's going to benefit other people, because, you know, like, I'm, you know, I'm at home, and that's my job. In a way, that's my calling. I can't expect that to be everybody's calling. I can't expect that. For, and I, and for me to demand that of other people would be wrong. So, uh, I don't necessarily think we all speak the same language, but... If it is in you to take care of something and, you know, you just feel like out of the blue, you don't know why you're supposed to get like a solar generator or anything to keep your living condition contained and maintained and to keep your standard of living as close to normal as possible in an abnormal societal environment. I did talk to someone about the financial scene because all the stuff I hear online is buy gold, buy silver, buy Bitcoin, and that the dollar is going to be gone by the end of the year. And I talked to somebody that's made her whole career about, you know, financial planning and her whole life. And, you know, she told me that the dollar wasn't going anywhere. And, but then she said, at the end of the conversation, she said, whatever you do, God will provide. She said, don't, don't worry about it. Don't waste your time worrying about money. She did tell me that. And, I mean, that's been her business her entire life. And that's the, that's the message I took from it. You know, she did say that she does have a generator and she's prepared. And she's a big-time Christian. And so that's what that's what I took out of it. Whether the dollar will still be here, I'm sure it will be in some shape or form. Um, I don't know how it's all going to play out. But some of the best financial advice I was ever given was don't keep your, all of your eggs in one basket. So, you know, things are changing. And... You know, I, I really kind of made a promise to myself that I'm no longer going to ignore that voice to, inner voice that I have to do things that may look weird to other people, you know, or they may not, not, may not look weird, but they don't understand. Because, you know, how God uses each and every one of us is a little different, and there's really no explaining how God works. So, you know... Don't ignore that voice inside of you that's telling you possibly to, you know, to stock up on this or that. Because even if it's not an emergency, you know, you could get the flu and get sick and be home for a couple of weeks. And you'll be so glad you had that extra Theraflu or you'll be so glad you had, um, you know, some canned salmon and, you know, oh, two or three, wor two weeks worth of soup, crackers, electrolytes, coconut, coconut water. And that, you know, you have a good, really all-purpose soap. Uh, I like peppermint Castile soap. It's in a liquid, and I can use it to shower, do laundry, wash dishes, all that. So, you know, it's really up to you. But I, I just want to let you know that it, you can do it. It may not be perfect, but you can do it. And, you know, if it's inside of you, put inside of you to do it, I think it's a good thing to go ahead and and follow that, follow through with that, because then after you do that, it's like it expands your brain, it expands your mind and your spirit, and I think you're more able to hear the voice of God, to feel it, act upon it, 
and then feel that reward because he, he really will reward you for that in my opinion. The reward is being able to hear him and be close to him. And um, I've really learned that very recently, a lot more than I have before. Well, okay, everyone, thank you so much for rambling. I really appreciate my new subscribers. You guys are really great. Um, I really thank you all so much. You all mean uh, so much to me. You really do, because we're really all in this together. And it's really nice to have like-minded people. And I can learn from, uh, you know, I look forward to learning from each and every one of you. And thank you so much. God bless each and every one of you. I love y'all so much. See y'all soon. Okay, bye-bye.